So here we are at the Bissol Wine event at the Dolce Vita in London, so it's called. And this here is the wine sleuth. Look at her, she's busy taping. Uh, she knows her stuff. We're here, you're invited to join us for the Bissol Wine Seminar. Today we're going to be tasting four of the Bissol range. As we know, Bissol imports four different styles of Prosecco into the UK. Uh, we've got some great distribution and today you're invited to taste four of them. This is Crede that I'm showing you. This is one of our flagship wines. Absolutely stupendous, delicious, award-winning Prosecco by Bissol. So join us for the tasting. Great. All you bloggers out there. Uh, first of all, I'm starting explaining what is Prosecco. Prosecco is a rarity because uh, the name of the grapes give the name to the wine. Only happen to the Pinot Grigio and to other few wine. But m most of the time, the, the name is given by the area, at the Champagne, Rioja, Chianti, and so on. The Prosecco, dated back uh, from the uh, 13th, 14th centuries, uh, and it was, it was made uh, for Venice, uh, for the rich uh, Venetian people, uh, to be drunk uh, as uh, aperitif, uh, as uh, everyday wine, uh, as 24-7 uh, wine. So, because for the Prosecco, you don't need uh, any reason, uh, an occasion. Uh, you only need uh, a cold bottle and a glass. Uh, so okay. hi i'm the wine sleuth i'm here today at the dolce vita uh, which is a show about italian food and wine in olympia west london and i'm with roberto from Viso prosecco fabulous stuff and roberto's going to tell us a little bit about prosecco hi prosecco is a new cool drink that everybody wants to drink at the moment prosecco is the name of the wine and the name of the grapes and the vine. And that's a really rare, you know, as you know, in the wine trade. Yeah, especially in Italy, they tend to go for regions, right? Like yeah, Chianti. everywhere. Champagne, Fiocca, yeah, Bordeaux, yeah, Burgundy. But thank God uh, they, we can promote the wine with the vine. So make our job easier. Excellent. OK. So, wow, well, tell us a little bit about this Prosecco. What? What are we Prosecco drinking here? Prosecco is a different uh, compared to the bubble. Because the, the cycle fermentation, which produces beautiful bubble, is in a tank, not so in the bottle, like a champagne. Ah, so that's the main difference between yes. champagne and prosecco. And the grapes. Of right, but prosecco goes through a tank fermentation. Yes. Yeah. And the, what uh, makes this wine so successful, so unique, no, no, no. so great, uh, is the fact uh, that uh, has low acidity. Low alcohol, 11, 11.5 percent. Small, fine, elegant pop. So the low acidity won't hurt your stomach. The bar won't fill you up your stomach. So you want to enjoy, you want to drink as like an aperitif or drink any time of the day, as we say the bisol. Let's talk about Prosecco, I guess, because that seems to be, apart from we had a Rosso earlier on, that was kind of not very good. Well, don't say that. <laughs> you, you, you tasted it too. <laughs> we want these people to invite us back, okay? So No. I mean, you know, the thing I thought about the Rosso, but what I thought about the, um, the Rosé was that it was, it was very dry. Maybe it was too dry? Rosé had no... Yeah, uh, it, it didn't have a lot of nose, which I was no. a bit disappointed in. Yeah. But I think in general, you know, if you want a dry rosé, mm. it was quite good. Yeah, I meant the Rosso de Montalcino, which we tried. Oh, the Rosso de Montalcino, yeah, no, that was okay. It was bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're, we're not, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> this is nice, this is the, uh, what is it? Pre oh, this is the better one. Bring the bottle closer to you. And there you go. No, not that close. There we go. <laughs> This was the one that I liked. Yeah, I thought it was lovely. Yeah, this is the good one. Yeah, I know. That was, that was very generous of them, wasn't it? I'm not going to give it back now. So, well, tell me what you think about this particular Prosecco. And what do you think about Prosecco in general? I mean, are you I a fan? Great. I think it's 24-7. <laughs> As Roberto said, it is 24-7. <laughs> no, I really enjoy Prosecco. I don't know why more people aren't into it. But it's like Carver in that way. Well, I think, I think, I think, the, I think, I think the problem...
problem with Prosecco is that, as I said, you know, it had this reputation for being very sweet. And, uh, you know, maybe back in the 70s, it, it probably was sweet. Uh, but now, you know, as Roberto said, they've adjusted to the marketplace and they're making Proseccos that are much uh, drier and more to the UK American palate, I think. What do you think? Yeah. That's <laughs> Very succinct. Yes, thank you, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, I think that you know they're trying. They're saying they're not champagne, but in a way they do compete with champagne. Don't they? I mean, they've got this sparkling. I'm trying to build a name. Yeah. Well, no champagne. Yeah. I think so that they're the, kind of aping it a little. Well, they have their own particular take. Well, and also I think the big point is that you know the it's it's, it's the price. Yeah. The price, but you know, I mean, the champagne. Honestly, if you want any kind of champagne nowadays, you're looking at what thirty pounds at least for something drinkable. Uh, and you know you can get a lovely prosecco. How do you think this is the best producer? And I, For I it's ten pounds, I mean it's yeah. it's, a, it's a steal, no? Well, yeah. One of the top producers, the Cartes, was only eighteen pounds. So yeah. So I mean, yeah, much it's, better it's, than the cheapest the, champagne the, you can get. It's the sensible option, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that. The sensible <laughs> option. <laughs> Anything else you want to say? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna turn this thing off now. <laughs>